In this video, we're going to discuss the Gestalt principles of visual perception. Now we discuss this at this point, not because your software doesn't know how to implement these kinds of things, but instead because we're gonna start working with sets of visualizations. And before we can start working with sets of visualizations, we have to understand how the human mind visually perceives why placement and location of these various items um, how it communicates to the brain as things being more similar or less similar and or more together or grouped versus not grouped, et cetera, all right? So again, we've been talking about perception principles related to one visualization. As soon as we start dealing with really any kind of visualization that's gonna be really kind of out in the field in business, we're gonna be mainly talking about dashboards and we need these multiple visualizations to work together. The Gestalt School of Psychology was something that was in Germany uh, in the early 20th century, and they did a lot of different research into how the human brain uh, perceived things. And this is part of what they um, learned regarding what the, the way that the human um, brain perceives things visually. And there, there are, and visually what we mean is, how the visual the brain categorizes something as being alike or together or not alike and apart and there are six of these um, characteristics or these qualities proximity similarity and closure closure continuity and connection and we'll talk about each one of these and what they mean and which ones uh, which ones are stronger and weaker and we need to pay attention to these things because once we start placing things on a dashboard, um, the brain's going to be using things like placement as far as proximity or closure or connection to interpret that these two graphs go together and these two do not. So when you look at these groups of objects or this, this set of objects, how many groups do you see? And it's different for each person. It, it, there, there are certain numbers that are more common, but people see this in a different fashion, in different ways. And so I'd like you to take a moment just to um, look at this and decide how many groups of objects do you see? And I'll come back in a moment. So how many groups did you see? Some people see two groups, the top line and the bottom line. Some people see one, two, three, four, five groups, or even six groups. Some people see one, two, three, four, five groups. And there's no real right answer. Some people even see three groups. But I'll, what, we're gonna, what we're gonna look at in the next few minutes is why people see some of these things as hanging together and some of these things as being apart. And that's what the Gestalt principles do. Now I'm gonna run through a few other pictures and I want you to watch how your perception of the group, of the various groupings may change. So here's the next one. When we change the colors of those squares, does your perception of the grouping change? When we connect different items, does your perception of the groupings change? When we enclose group some items together, your perception of the grouping certainly will change. And that's just a quick example of these different principles that we're going to be looking at in the next few minutes. So the first Gestalt principle that we'll discuss is proximity. Now, obviously, we've seen things like this, and, we, and, and this is kind of natural, that when things cluster together, we assume they are more alike and when things do not cluster together, when they spread apart. So objects that hold together in, in clusters or in you know, areas of, of, of vision are perceived to be in groups. Now the most important driver of this is white space. So you're gonna wanna make sure that if you're trying to drive people's perception using proximity, that you use enough scale so that you have enough distance between the points to be distinguishable as clusters, right? So look at this example. Simply by slightly having slightly different distance between the columns and the rows, we see these points 
represented as rows or columns. And that's the exact same um, graph, just tipped on its side. All right. So similarity is pretty straightforward. The second principle says that if something looks alike or seems alike, it will be perceived as alike. And this is one of the things that is really key about encoding data visually, is that when we use size and color and shape, we are implying togetherness or sameness. And when we get into dashboards, it's really important that when we're using size or shape in different graphs that, that are on the same page, that those colors and shapes and sizes have similar meaning or technically identical meaning on that dashboard page. So if you have a particular shade of orange in two different panes, it, they should mean the same thing. Now, enclosure is pretty straightforward. When you put a line around something, you're putting it into a box, right? Or you're putting it into an area that implies that, hey, we've put everything in this box, which means we've sorted it together into this area. This is the same set of points, just with two different shadings or uh, enclosures. And you see that your perception about what goes together is completely different. Now we can also create arbitrary boundaries in Tableau um, like this if we want to, but really the way that we're going to be thinking about enclosure is how we set up our dashboards and how we, we put them into areas that are enclosed. The other thing that's kind of cool is that we don't have to fully enclose. And we'll look at an example of this in a few minutes, but we don't have to fully enclose because the human brain fills in the space. And this allows us to use lighter kinds of uh, enclosure marks that aren't distracting, or as um, Tufty might put it, non-data ink. And so you see here in this example, you don't need to put a box all the way around the graph, although you can. Simply by putting a small border around it, you can separate it from something else. Now, one Gestalt principle that you might not realize that you've used for your whole life is alignment. When we align things, we create the perception of continuity. And you've done this many times by making nested tables like this, where you've said, um, you know, based upon alignment, these things are at one level, or these things are together. And so we see that, um, and so when we're creating our dashboards, when we line things up, we're going to create the perception of them being the same. Now, when we connect things, they became, they really become one, right? They really become part of one chunk. And connection overrules proximity. Um, and it overrules pretty much everything except maybe enclosure. The, the strength, we'll talk about the strength in a second, but um, these different principles have different levels of strength. Proximity is pretty much the weakest. Connection and closure are the strongest. And look at our grouping here, right? Sameness, proximity, these two are the same. These two are close, but they're not the same and they're enclosed in different groups. They're not perceived as being the same, right? And so enclosure is the strongest, then connection, similarity, and proximity. If you really want to drive things home, enclose things, connect things. That If we want to drive things home, that things are the same. And let's just go through this again and just watch how our perception of grouping changes. So we want to make the most important data stand out in our dashboard. And we also want to arrange the data in a matter that makes manner that makes sense, right? And so take a look at this graph on a potential dashboard. We've placed this graph on the dashboard. It's there. Great. It's not really part of anything else. It's just standing alone. But when I add this other graph, now are they part of the same story or are they part of two different cognitive evaluations?
Well, I can't really tell right now. I, I mean, these graphs, these pictures, they're like the same graph. So that's that's maybe making it a little bit more similar than it was. But just picture two column charts. They're far apart on the screen, and they may or may not be related. If I separate them with these gauges, which is something we won't do when we talk about uh, dashboards in another video, we see now that those that line of gauges has really divided those two column charts and that they're, they're not perceived as being together. But when I rearrange, now they might be, right? And so just note how the simple act of arranging things on the dashboard is changing your perception about what goes with what. When I put a little bit of a border on there, it separates it a little bit more. If I really go crazy and I put lines there, now I see that I have three areas, right? And here in this, in this example, the spark lines that are in the center kind of divide up the graph into two or three um, cognitive evaluation spaces. This is really um, not quite as direct as we would be in the dashboard because we would have maybe a title or a border around one or two of these columns to show that they're together. But the idea here is just notice how alignment and arrangement can adjust or shift your perception of togetherness in the dashboard.